This is John with HookahJohn.com. Hey everybody, this is John with HookahJohn.com here on a quiet Friday afternoon. Um, doing the usual work, but all of a sudden a mass of people that you may or may not know came in. So I want to take a little moment here, and because we have some great content that you guys might like, of things that uh, we were kind of surprised that one guy knew and the other guy didn't. So let me go around and introduce everyone. Can I have the camera please? Sure. And you can do plugs, like that's Matt Desin. You know him, AM Hookah, or it's Morning Hookah? Morning now. Hookah. You can find me on Instagram, Morning Hookah over there. Also, YouTube.com slash Morning Hookah. There you go. So we got a lot of people from uh, cool. the this groups. Right Hello, this gentlemen. Hello. Yep, I know everyone. I know Paul. Or, uh, yeah, Paul's over there. Hello, Next, everybody. Paul. See you out. Paul. And then we got Jeremy Bird. We got George Johnson with Regal. Mr. Smoker Pass himself. Howdy. James Henley, all right, uh, which is Hookah Man. Hookah Man. And we got Raul Martinez. Hello, just long time uh, smoker, all right. average guy. What's that and... forum tag, Raul, from back, way back in the days? Oh, it's embarrassing. Come on. What well, was X. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. And we got but Cam I was very active. We got Cameron's amount here. So I wanted to, I started this video because we were talking, George is a rep for Tangiers, and these guys are consumers right here, as all of us are. And um, we are talking about uh, the different lines and why some don't sell as the other ones, and George was surprised. So, what were you saying, Paul? That uh, why is Berkuk not a big seller? Because I was saying it's not as big of a seller as uh, the original line. Yeah. Why? Uh, Berkuk, people just don't know about it as well as they do with the yellow line. A lot of people associate Tangiers strictly with the yellow line. So even like some of the the purple stuff, right? The uh, or the F, the F line the F and, and Burley. Uh, people are staying away from because, like, you know, even the, the groups will, will say, hey, if you're a new smoker, start with Berkuk. Yeah, well, start with the yellow line, usually. Yeah. We used to say um, Berkuk, say, actually. Start with Berkuk, Berkuk, Berkuk and then work your way up. Yeah, yeah and I, I still say that if you know what you're talking about, you say, hey, it's a full full nicotine tobacco, so yeah. start with Berkuk. I usually suggest foreplay because it's a crowd favorite and it's a little forgiving on the pack. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I usually lead with. But that's that's one of the things is that people don't realize that it's a sweeter base of tobacco. It's agave nectar sweetened, and then the lower nicotine level of it makes it nice. Yeah. It was basically there used to be a line called Lucid, yeah, and so the Lucid line got replaced with Bear Cook, and I think it was a, a much better win for them. Yeah. What was the biggest reason for the Lucid line to get replaced? Is there a major reason for that? I don't, I, I don't know. I can't speak on, on that. Actually, I was in Lebanon the time that that, that change happened. Okay. <laughs> so when, when Lucid came out, I remember the whole thing being that it required less heat, like three-fourths heat and whatnot. Is that still something that people talk about? I remember that being, you know, like people were doing the stone hinge with the flat coals mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. changing their packs, but a lot of that has kind of died down. People are just treating it, I feel like, just like more and just packing it. Yeah, most, yeah. most people don't make a differentiation, and I think the bigger differentiation would be between flavors. Right, so certain flavors are more heat reactive than others. Blueberry is a classic one that required less coals. It yeah. just, it, you know, Eric would be like, hey, that's a three coal flavor. You don't put four coals on it. And it, he's right, <laughs> it worked out. Especially, you know, Japanese coals. And it, and it would, it would always be, he's well thought out the heat management on it. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that, you know, people never gave credit for that. Eric's always been talking about the heat management before there was HMDs, before there was coconut coals. The tobacco was built around the heat management or Japanese coals, and that's why Tangiers still does the Japanese coals. It's been developed that way. Well, Tangiers was developed in a time where, you know, these gigantic coals and, you know, all of this technology really wasn't a thing, you know. Yep. We're talking like what 2006, from what I remember back in you yeah, know even further back. Before that, yeah, I mean he was making bowls back to you know millennium time. Yeah. Right. So, that that definitely is a a, a changer. Oh. I mean, I remember when we thought Three Kings was the best. At least at Hootie Company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three Kings. I'm like, I'm like, man, these are the best. I'm like, ooh, Starlight. Why would yeah. you get Chinese ones? These ones are great. They're from Holland. Yeah. This, <laughs> this, this guy right here still uses quick lights. Yes. Right? All yeah. days. I think when people talk about tangiers, they associate it with the higher nicotine content. Okay. Obviously. So sorry to interrupt you, Raul, but that's going to be my question. Yeah. Uh, George works very closely with tangiers. And so I'm going to ask you as a consumer, do you smoke a lot of Tangiers? I sure do. Okay. 
So why don't you give me the breakdown on the four lines and let's see if the answer is going to be different from George. So you get a uh, point of view from an actual consumer. Could, what Break down the four lines for me. Well, there's Noir, the original line, which is, like I said, what most people associate Tangiers with, you know, being higher nicotine content. And then we're, we're having a discussion with Burkuk, which is lesser nicotine, nicotine content, excuse me, and it's sweeter. I didn't know it was made from, you know, the agave nectar. I think that should be, like, maybe, you know. Hopefully that's not proprietary information. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eric. But if it isn't, then that, maybe that's something that you can promote, you know, for newer smokers. And then there's F line, which is caffeinated line. Like I said, that's not as advertised as much. You know, me as an enthusiast and a longtime smoker, right? For like I don't know, 16, 17 years. You know, I'm I'm into, I'm into trying everything, but I know there's like only select flavors that are made in F line and Burley. So maybe I don't know if it's maybe worth it to for them to do it to release more popular flavors in that line to see if it would work. But but at the same time. It, they're not advertised as, as much. Okay, and there's one more line, right? Yeah, did did a, you mention the burly? Uh, I kind of put line? that bunch of that okay. together with that line, seeing that there's only select flavors. Okay. But so how accurate? Sorry to keep cutting you guys off. I don't want to make an hour long video, but no, how how accurate was he as a consumer? Well, it was pretty accurate, and you know, nor is the original line. It's named you know black in French because it's a dark leaf, right? Whatever. Noir. Noir. <laughs> and the uh, you know Berkuk, which you know I just explained, yeah. you know you got that. F line is nor just caffeinated and is probably the first and only world's you know caffeinated tobacco. Um, and that that is not that popular. You know even Burley sells more than than F line, but F line's cool. It's been around a long time. Burley is named after the cut of the tobacco, and it is a higher nicotine content. So you're pretty spot on. Okay. Yeah, people people call it the colors because they just don't know the names. Yeah. Okay. There is That's one big. wild card here, which is the Cayman B flat. Oh well. Oh, the elusive. Now, as I understand it, from what I've always heard on the forums, is it's Noir and Burley combined into one flavor. Are you waiting? So as you know, we were discussing earlier the 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 process oh. behind Bug Powder and Schnozberry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Cayman B is just the Cayman version of that. Okay. All the extra cane mint kind of thrown in together. Yeah, there was there was a special cane mint mixture for Alyssa at one point, but I think the cane mint B is the cane mints go into that. Okay. Any other questions about or things that like you don't know about Tangiers that you'd want to know? Uh, more than anything, something that I've always been kind of curious about when it comes to Tangiers is um, just kind of like wh where do the different flavors that come up for like how does he decide which ones he wants to try to create as a flavor? How, what, what is the research and development process kind of like? And that might be too broad of a question for kind of a shorter video, but I've always been interested in that kind of stuff. Hold, hold on. Before you answer, George, um, does Eric take visitors from the public? Because he'd gladly entertain hours and hours of conversation, especially if it's about him and his product, right? Well, you'd probably have to be invited. All right. Um, so. But Matt, Matt's a respectable dude. And so, I think he should go out there because you do a lot of content too on your page, yeah. um, um, and you should work it out and see if you can get in there. Because Eric is just, he'll, if you ask Eric a question, be prepared for an answer that will go on and on, and it will explain every single detail, and then yeah. go off on tangents about <laughs> politics and social <laughs> issues and, well, and you, anything. As you know, the Tangiers Taverns are happening. So yes, he, yes, he, those he, are very he, cool. He's always looking for you know people in the industry that have something to say that know something about the industry. And you mentioned before, you know, knowing about Tangiers way back in the day, I'm sure he would be really happy and delighted to have you come. Yeah, I'd love to. That'd be but, fantastic. But to your question, I, I'm I'm not part of any of the research and development and. Whatever Eric's, you know, chess club brain comes up with is what what comes out. And yeah. I, I just I'm I'm rolling with it, and you know, gotta have trust in the the gear leader because that's what he chooses usually. I think that any hookah smoker that goes beyond, you know, AF and moves along the path of, you know, starting with you know beginner brands or whatever you want to call them, lounge brands, they always come to respect Cane Mint as the OG of dark leaf and the OG of the expansion of the industry. So I think it's always important to take some sort of homage to that. If you want to talk about OG stuff, so you notice the number system, right? Mm -hmm. We all know, right? Those numbers are, look, we look deep into the soul of an exist, a flavor and assign it a number in which it was released. 
So the, does anybody know the number one? I don't. Uh, Apple. No, 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 no. Apple's two. Apple is two. Number Google's one. Is there is four. no number one right now. Is... There's no number one now, is there? There is number one, but it's not available now. It's not available. I don't remember. Apricot. Apricot. Ah, yeah. I knew it. It's so good. The original apricot is amazing, right? Hmm. And so, some num obviously, numbers get recycled and numbers get replaced, right? But that number hasn't changed, and it, it's just a testament to how old it is. What is seasonal apricot? Apricot spring blend is a, a mixture of a uh, different apricot. It's not the original. Okay. It's not the original apricot. Because I was like, man, I have two of those at home. I wonder if uh, they would fare. <laughs> I'm sure if you if you went to visit Eric and he was kind enough, he may pack you a bowl of it. But I can't speak for him. Okay. <laughs> we talked about Tangiers, and I want to move it along. Um, anything you guys want to discuss that's up and coming or, or just in hookah in general, since we've got a good mix of uh, gentlemen here that come from all different backgrounds in hookah experience and hookah preferences. Who, who do I pick first? Who, I don't want to pick George or Sean because they're Cameron. very active. All right, Cameron, go ahead. What do you want to talk about? What do you like? What well, do you... right now, Dark Side and Trifecta. Probably okay. the best two brands on the market in Dark Lead, hands down. Why are you looking this yeah. way? Oh, no, I'm looking at George. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really bad opinion about Tangiers. I think what? it's probably the worst. Dark lead brand on the market. Don't listen to him. Do yeah. not listen Edit to him. Edit that out. Yeah. I, I think it's terrible. I think it's actually terrible. That's just me. That's all I smoke. I'd say about 85% of the time I smoke Tangiers and 15% of the so time I'll pack it. From outside of enthusiasts, me and Paul and Bob went to a lounge. Uh -huh. They packed Tangiers. Mm -hmm. The guy himself didn't like his own bowl. We mm -hmm. packed him Trifecta. He even said himself, oh, this is way better than Tangiers is. Okay. That's from an outside, non-enthusiast perspective. People, okay, thanks for that. You're you're very entitled to your opinion. Um, and that's it. I don't know. All right, that's good. Who, well, all right. Sean, here, here's a question for you. You've been in the game long enough. So how subjective is flavoring and brand preference? Flavoring and brand, wait, 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 sorry. Everyone, in my opinion, is going to have a different palate, right? Oh, yeah. So if I go on and do a flavor review, my flavor review is going to be completely subjective oh. to my taste. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. So when he says something like that, it's subjective to his taste. Right. When you say something, it's very subjective to your taste. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of times I find myself veering away from a flavor review. I'll say what I taste in it, right. but I'll say I personally like it because yeah. it's so subjective. And, and I feel like, um, you know, going on to that, I feel like that can be said for flavor reviews and also for brands and products. Like when you're starting off these videos, it's more so, look, this is how... I enjoy this flavor. Right. This is literally mm -hmm. just me. Um, I've never had lechi fruit before. I've only had it in hookah form. So when I had it, I was like, this is a good flavor. I'm not sure what I'm comparing it to, but it's good. And then I go out and try an actual lechi yeah, fruit, yeah. you know, like a drink or whatnot. I'm like, okay, now I've got kind of an idea of where this is at. But for me, like, I don't smoke, or I don't drink coffee. Yeah. So for me to review a coffee flavor, I'm going to say it's ass. Like, I'm like, this is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I don't like it depends on what type of ass. Right, right. There you go. Um, and someone else would be like, dude, this is my favorite flavor. How are you going to, you know, go in on this? And I'm like, I'm sorry. This is this is my background. This is what I'm going off of. And I can rate this however I want it because this, I'm not rating this for how you, how I would think you would enjoy it. So really, yeah. Um, it, it, when it comes to the re these reviews, when you're watching someone, it's literally what they're experiencing, right. what they're tasting. And really, you just kind of find the people that have the same interests. Those are the people you can really kind of go off of and follow. And you're like, okay, if he likes it, he has a track record of things that I like, I'm pretty much going to stick with him. It's funny because me and Paul have a running discussion over the last year I was just regarding the exact same, same thing, thing you <laughs> just said. Mm. Like, we literally uh, were on hang. So we do this online thing where we just, like, get on the computer and like video chat with each other like every night mm -hmm. right and we we're talking about the same exact thing and we we're like how do we when we make videos or when we talk to people on the forums how do we separate ourselves from uh a personal recommendation based on our you know taste buds yeah. uh and just be like hey this is what i taste and you now the consumer the guy that's reading this uh review will have the uh <coughs> all the power to make the decision whether you like it or not but it's, it's like a good scientist, right? Yeah. You know, when they're they're researching and they have a theory, they're not going to sit here and say, this is it. 
Yeah. They're gonna say we're fairly certain, or data points towards this. Yeah. Right. It's not a, a black and white, cut and dry. This isn't an empirical truth or a mathematical truth. Mm -hmm. This is subjective in some fashion. And if the data pointed in a different direction, we're not opposed to it pointing in any direction. Right. Yeah. Because it's, it is so subjective. Yeah. And also, like based on a, like as a consumer, right? We don't know how this stuff is manufactured like 100%. We're just guesstimating. I don't. Yeah. yeah. So it's like when you're when you're telling people like, oh, I, I prefer this taste. Like when somebody comes up in the group and they're like, oh, I want a dessert, sweet flavor, or candy. I was like, you're talking to the wrong guy. You got to talk to Matt. Mm. Like if you want a good candy flavor, Matt is the guy. Like he loves candy flavors mm. and like floral flavors. I was like, don't talk to me or don't talk to Cameron about mints or cashmere flavors because it reminds him of his grandma's house. He doesn't like it. <laughs> terrible. terrible. Yeah. He doesn't like it. Like, don't talk to me about coffee flavors. It reminds me of my grandma's house. Hey, your negative association so. of that smell that does not indicate <laughs> <laughs> whether it's good or not. And right? of course, Mr. Candy Flavors. I mean, flavors hook kids. Come on, are you not no, watching the yeah, TV? Not, not even close. I'm actually a really big believer in the idea that you shouldn't shy away. You should not shy away from bias at all. The people that tell you that something should be quote unquote unbiased, they're the ones that are trying to like dictate and tell you exactly what it is that you're supposed to be doing, where in fact what you should be doing is you should be looking into what people look at as their bias. You should in not just look at a single flavor review from any single individual, you should be looking at what they actually like on their palate. That way you can kind of understand what their bias is towards, so you can align yourself and understand like, yes, I do agree with the things that this person is saying, and not shy away from it, unless in fact that you're actually, you know, the other direction from what it is that they like. If I like a bunch of candy flavors, chances are my quote unquote biases are not going to line up with yours. If you like things that are way more savory, then we're not going to see eye to eye. That doesn't make either one of us wrong, but the reality is if you're looking for something as a flavor review, you need to get to know the flavors that the person actually enjoys. Otherwise, the information that they're giving you is, is basically useless. You have to understand what the individual person is enjoying to be able to understand if you're going to enjoy the flavor that they're recommending. All right. Yeah, Very totally true. Where's your beanie at? Another. Uh... You want a beanie? <laughs> Where's your beanie at? Buddy? Is there a hookah John beanie? Yeah, is there is. There's some hookah. One. I might need I a hookah one here. John beanie. Hey, can somebody grab us a beanie? They might be on the top right behind me. <laughs> yeah, a sport coat and a black beard or two? <laughs> two, please, because it's been freaking freezing at the barn, yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What other uh, topics? Anybody want to throw anything out there? Like, how about the biggest event coming up? In June, yes. Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, it's all going to be there. I will John. be there. I cannot wait. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> We're all going to be there. Four. All right. Four. Yeah. It's H E W Quattro. All right. So I'm glad you guys are coming out to see that. Uh, I have to throw in a plug. You guys know I do that all the time. All right. Plug that shit in, John, and make yeah. sure it has power. Yeah. Anybody who wants them. There's a hookah John beanie. I have a beanie for you. I've got the mountain beanie. Oh, yeah. That's the one, right? Whoever wants one, yeah, grab them all. That's a different one. Or unless you guys want those hats instead, like you were in a rebel. You like hats like that style? I actually have one. Oh, dude. You know, you said they're talking about the coffee flavors. It's upside down. There you go. So you got to turn it inside out. Got to turn it inside out. What is it? But Adam sent me some of that. All the way? No, no. Yeah. We're trying to do the mountain man style. Paul, I'm good. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, there we go. A little I'm here to tell you that fun. if you have a bias towards anything, that's okay, and you are unlimitedly amount uh, able to choose the things that you like unlimitedly. You, there's nothing. And it's hookah. okay if you like what you smoke. Yeah. You smoke what you like. Exactly. Right. Don't let some asshole on the internet tell you what to smoke or what to enjoy. Enjoy the things that you it. actually like or how to enjoy it. Exactly. There are no assholes on the internet. Never. Yeah. There's never it's been good. one. I'm sure. I'm an asshole on the internet sometimes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're just an pictures of my asshole yeah. going around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Anything else anybody want to touch upon, or should we just get back to our private session here and uh, continue in this conversation? Uh, everybody, stay alert on local yes. municipalities, your own states. If there's any legislation coming your way, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'll give you information packets. I'll give you coaching on what you need to say. Any advice I can handle, give to you guys. We, you know, I'm here for you. Remember that this is your hobby too, and it takes more than one person to make change, right? Right. right. And I've been watching George closely, and even 
tagging along with him. He's going to meeting after meeting every different city, and he's got some good works. I have a video coming out too at one of the meetings. Um, but seriously support George Johnson, Regal Hookah, Tangier's Hookah. Even Fumari's involved, El Factor's involved, Starbuzz is involved. Who else? Other brands we want to do a shout out for? I mean, even some local lounges, you know, RB contributed a decent amount. Some of our smaller smoke shops like Smokers Delight and Burbank, they contributed. Munchies. You know, Munchies is doing a lot of the heavy carrying. I mean, it's it's Munchies. That's he's our our ringleader when it, especially in LA. Arnie's awesome. Arnie's yeah. an amazing person. So that's who I was talking to when we were walking in. So we have to have our daily updates and what's going on. Yeah. But yeah, Alfaker's got their team rolling and, and we're working very closely with them. Kumari was OG instrumental in starting Hookah Chamber of Commerce. And yeah, I mean, Starbucks contributed and we, we need contributions, especially now. It's time for us to make the strategic moves that we need to make for the state of California. And uh, any brands that are not involved, I mean, literally, it's it's your livelihood that we're talking about. California is probably the largest market for anybody, right? Even even some of the little things that I would ask is, you know, taking you know images or cartoons off of packaging is is, is oh my God, it's still it's yeah. still really difficult to get everybody to make that change. Those things need to happen. They should have happened a long time ago. Little purple candy is now little purple stuff for a reason. Right. All right. Awesome, guys. Thank you guys for coming by. Um, I'm going to look forward to the rest of the afternoon talking to you guys. And I appreciate you being on camera. And here, um, do I have any final words? If you are thinking about buying anything hookah related in the future, you only go to hookahjohn.com. All right? That's all I get to say. All right. All right. That's it. We can hit stop. All right.